Whether you're new to EVs or an experienced electric driver, it's a question everyone asks. What's the best speed to charge an EV? Whether you're at home, at work, or on a public charger, if you have a choice of different speeds to charge your EV, which one should you choose? Well, let's find out. And if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up, which tells other people it's worth watching. And if you haven't seen it yet, we recommend our previous video, which was an introduction to charging. We talk about charge speeds, plug types, and how to use different charging networks. Today, we'll explain more about that first point. Electric vehicles can come with their own vocabulary, and it's one of the things that every new buyer learns. But it can be confusing. So let's keep it simple. And for our video today, our imaginary EV has a 50 kilowatt hour battery. We'll use that battery size to work out how long our imaginary car will take to charge. There are three main types of charging speed. Slow, fast, and rapid. And for rapid charging, now you may hear the latest rapid chargers being called high-powered chargers or HPCs. Indeed, even the hardware manufacturers themselves sometimes label their own chargers as that, but today we'll simply call them rapid chargers. So let's start slowly. Well, this is the laziest way of all the household socket. Whether your country uses 120 volts or 230 volts AC, plugging into your household sockets is almost like trickle charging an electric vehicle, and it's not recommended for those in a hurry. For example, at 230 volts AC, you typically charge at 2.3 kilowatts. That's about the same as a kettle to make a cup of tea or coffee. And whilst every car charges differently as the battery fills up, our imaginary EV with its 50 kilowatt hour battery would take around 22 hours to charge. So clearly you'll want to be doing something else whilst you're slow charging, like working or sleeping. A lot, because it's going to take a very long time. Other examples of slow charging include lamppost chargers, which can vary from 3 to 6 kilowatts. And sometimes workplaces or businesses will supply a domestic socket for you to plug in your own charging cable. You may have been provided one when you bought your car, but they're easily available from third-party sellers. Slow charging cables will most commonly have a domestic plug on one end, a box in the middle, and a Type 2 socket to plug into your car. For those who have the time or only drive a few miles a day, slow charging whilst your car is parked is very common. You might use a two or three pin plug, a type two socket or a commando plug. One advantage of charging slowly is keeping your battery healthy. Time for a very quick lesson in the kind of lithium ion battery cells you find in an EV. As you charge or discharge them, the internal resistance in each cell creates a small amount of heat. But if you do it quickly, there's a lot of heat. Now that has the potential to shorten the life of your EV battery. So charging slowly means less heat and potentially a longer lasting battery. However, one final point of charging for extended periods with a domestic plug or consistent current over many hours could be a risk, which is why we recommend a dedicated EV charger installed at home by an accredited professional. Cost. Well, public slow chargers can commonly be free and workplaces free or even subsidized. At home, you might be able to access cheap electricity rates overnight, for example, but you won't fully take advantage of these because you won't get much energy into your car using this method. Most commonly, 7 kilowatts, 11 kilowatts if you're using a Tesla destination charger, or 22 kilowatts. This is the speed the majority of people use to charge their EVs most days. And we're still talking here about AC charging. Your house uses AC, or alternating current. Your EV stores its energy in its battery pack as DC, or direct current. So your car has an onboard charger, or converter, to go from AC to DC. And this is where we come across the issue that your car may become a bottleneck. So even if you do find a 22 kilowatts AC fast charger, you probably can't take all of that power. 
In Europe, the Renault Zoe is best known for its ability to charge at 22 kilowatts, unlike many other EVs. Many plug-in hybrids, and even some Nissan Leafs, only have around a 3 kilowatt charger built in, so that's the maximum the car can charge at, regardless of the charger you find. You can still connect them to a very fast charger, but they can't make the most of the power. Dedicated wall box chargers at your house, often called EVSE, would typically be rated around 7 kilowatts. But it's the most common speed of fast charger to find at destinations like shops, car parks, leisure facilities and workplaces. Again, most of these are called untethered. In other words, you better remember your own cable. Our imaginary EV with its 50 kilowatt hour battery pack would charge in around 8 hours at 7 kilowatts. But considering most cars spend their time parked up overnight at home and during the day at work, 7 kilowatts is considered by many as the ideal charge speed. Cost. Well, these are often free and paid for by your workplace or the location owner, for example, to incentivize you to spend your time in their shop. For those which do cost money, they may be cheaper or included as part of your charging plan if you subscribe to a network. And finally, we have rapid charging, the type which gets the most attention because you can top up your battery in a few minutes. These chargers are often found at motorway service stations or on main driving routes. These chargers are also the most expensive for the charging networks to install, both for the hardware and the grid connections, so they can be rare. But even though we're no longer converting from AC to DC, your car still might be the bottleneck. Your car's BMS, or Battery Management System, is in total control of the charging session and continually telling the charger how much power to supply. 50 kilowatt DC fast chargers are most common around Europe and North America. Not the latest technology anymore, but you can still get an 80% charge of our example EV in 45 minutes. And that should be enough for most road trip stops, adding two to three hours of driving until the next charger. And finally, the very fastest charging speeds. Some say ultra rapid or even high powered charging. And of course, Tesla have their supercharging network. On these new and very fast rapid chargers, you wouldn't typically spend more than around 20 minutes. That would be enough to go from 20 to 80% charge and, crucially, take advantage of the fastest speeds. Even the latest electric vehicles can seriously slow down the charge speed after 80% state of charge for battery safety reasons, and so it would be a waste of your time to sit on one of these new ultra-rapid chargers, just adding the last few percent. They're also quite rare, so it might be a good idea, if you do need a full charge, not to block the charger, but to move to a nearby fast charger. It's worth noting most modern EVs can keep their batteries cool, but relying entirely on rapid charging does have the potential to degrade your battery. You may find that over time your range decreases and your car charges slower. Cost. Well, the cost of rapid charging can rise quickly. You're often charged more for the latest chargers and billed per kilowatt hour. And you often pay a lot more for rapid charging than anywhere else. But they are often in the most convenient locations and you pay for convenience. Now tell us your favorite way to charge. Do you prefer to pay extra for faster charging or are you happy to charge slowly if you save money? Let us know in the comments below.